morning guys I want to do a uh, video here for you this is gonna be like a short review uh, slash a tryout on a vacuum cup mount windshield mount for my uh, video camera for the truck here or for a car whatever you want to use it on sorry I'm still waking up I'm a little groggy this morning so I want to show this thing to you this is what it is and you can see my rearview mirror is there but basically it's got that vacuum plunger on it which needs to be pushed when that red is sticking out that means it's losing its grip a little bit so you push the plunger until that stays away so it's got a little rod on it here to a gimbal ball mount and then uh, you could have a quick clamp on it which I do not I just have the standard stud quarter 20 stud that comes on it because I don't have uh, I mean Frodo quick release on this camera I have another brand and the Manfrotto quick release is like 40 bucks for each complete setup and then you can buy more uh, female ends for all of your different mounts but uh, you only need one male end for the camera so let's look at this it's got a uh, a lever here to release the tension on the gimbal so the ball swivels there and it'll swivel here as well when that's released so let's snug that up just a little and then also you've got a knob on the side here for this post um, you just need to loosen it a little say you want to swivel the camera back to face you you can do that but basically that's the gist of it right there there's not a lot to it okay uh, this mount is about 80 88 dollars on filmtools.com so we're gonna go ahead and just mount the camera up in it here and basically you just take that stud right here and thread it up through the bottom of your camera if you have a uh, thread on style so I'll just take a couple of turns here and tighten up the thumb wheel and then I will adjust the gimbal mount here so that this is uh, going where it's supposed to. I'm going to turn the truck around. So we're aimed out the driveway and I'll adjust that real quick. But you'll get to see, we'll do a trial on this just to see how sturdy it is and do a quick driving vlog. And we're going to test the audio on it as well. I actually started making this video last night but it was really foggy out. <laughs> and uh, I decided to just cut it off because it was too much of a distraction for driving. I'm going to try and adjust this up a little bit. We're just a little off kilter. Almost need a level. And of course, now that I tightened up the bottom of the mount, the swivel part. There we go. Now we're good and tight. So let's go take a drive and we'll have a little uh, description of what I got here. Um, they make a couple different types of this mount. Uh, they make one with a little bit longer uh, rod on it and they also make um, you can interchange the the down rod on this thing and it looks like I didn't get the camera tight so hang tight for a second oh I see what I did there we go I just didn't have the other camera was tight but the uh, swivel on the mount wasn't tight um, they, I think they have a six and a three or a five and a three inch extension rod for this. So if you have a larger camera, uh, you can lower it. I want to, I'll give you the specs at the end or, uh, in a note on this video and, uh, let you know how much weight this mount is rated for. And they actually rate these mounts at three times the failure load. 
so, or I'm sorry, a third the failure load so that uh, you know that you're well covered. You just got to keep an eye on that plunger. Uh, so rotate it in a fashion where you can see it. I've actually got mine just below the rear view mirror so you can see it. Um, I can tell I'm not sure if I have that camera exactly straight going out the front of the truck. It might be skewed a little bit, but uh, it'll be something to play around with a little bit. I know it's going to move. It's not going to be uh, perfectly tight and stable because the truck's going to move, but uh, for the most part, we're pretty tight here. And that's another reason I'm not sure if I want to put a quick release on it. I'm not worried about the quick release let it go. I'm just thinking about stability. And this is the Canon uh, HF M50, uh, which was replaced by the M500. Uh, it have a pear stone wide angle lens on it, which is not a particularly expensive wide angle. Um, if you move it around a lot, you end up uh, getting margins around the outside. So, that's neither here nor there. It's still kind of foggy, you guys can see. It hasn't snowed in two weeks, and we had about 18 inches or better uh, ground cover, and we probably melted, in some places we've melted 50% of the snowpack off the ground. Uh, it, it's been raining since yesterday, uh, maybe lunchtime, but we've still got a lot of snow uh, in certain areas, so I suspect by the end of the week everything except for the snow piles will be gone. I want to thank my buddy Dave Redmond for suggesting this camera mount. I talked to him about it a couple of years ago. Uh, they use these kind of mounts in the Ice Road Trucker Show and on uh, Deadliest Roads. And he had one of them and I, I kind of liked it. He showed it in one of his videos and uh, he let me know where he got it. And uh, I think it's a pretty good deal for less than 90 bucks. I want to say they had a deal going on for free shipping. I could be wrong. It took three days to get here, so that wasn't too awful bad. But so far, so good. I mean, it seems pretty stable. I think I probably should have cleaned my windshield, but I was anxious to try it out and see what was what. Um, they do have a little bit larger vacuum mount for uh, like mid-sized cameras. Uh, cameras that are probably three times the size of my little M50 camera. But uh, I think this will be more than sufficient. This will hold a mid sized camera um, as far as weight goes. But I want to say this one will support up to six pounds or something like that. They also use these camera in the Sonic uh, drive-in commercials for the two guys in the car. Um, it's got a kind of a short gimbal mount on it, so it's probably better used on a side glass, like your uh, door window or something like that. But this is the way I'm going to use it uh, for snow pond videos and driving vlogs and such. The only downfall I see to this is the mic on this camera is on the front and that's close to the windshield and with the diesel engine and the road noise and everything you may still uh, need to crank the volume up or adjust it in the video uh, when you're making a vid just so that it's not too muffled. I suppose you could wear a uh, lavalier mic or something like that if you really wanted to but I kind of like all the ambient noise especially in the snow pond videos a lot of guys like that um, you get the defroster noise if you have the blower turned up things like that or uh, air conditioning when you got that going the blower will probably get picked up in it but this particular camera tends to cancel the uh, the ambient noise pretty well the mic does I've been waiting a long time to get this. A lot of guys have been kind of fussing over the poor uh, video. I was setting the camera up in the dash on a big pile of towels. Um, 
which worked, but it was so close to the hood, that's all you saw was the top of the hood, and you didn't see the snowplow as much as was really going on. Um, and previous to that, I used my uh, Kodak PlaySport camera, which is just a point and shoot, and I had a gorilla pod that I wrapped around the headrest on the passenger seat, which works, but it's not very stable, and when that camera shakes a little bit, it just destroys the audio and starts chirping and just getting generally poor audio out of the camera. Um, I looked at other mounts. They had a headrest mount that clamped on the headrest with a couple of thumb screws, and that looks like it would be a good deal if you had a passenger in your passenger seat. Otherwise, the passenger seat tends to move a little bit. The headrest shakes a little bit. So you still run into that problem of not having good audio um, and uh, the image in the video, it, it just doesn't stay stable enough. Uh, it'll drive you crazy. Generally, a kind of a gloomy day here. I think it's supposed to be 45 or 50 degrees today, but the ground is still real cold and there's a lot of snow on it, so probably the last five days we've had this ground fog just from the warmer temperatures and, the, and all that going on so I don't know how well the camera picks that up but the other thing I've done with the camera after I uh, got you guys focused is I flipped the screen around so that it's not a distraction so the camera's just kind of once it's set, it's set and go. When I go to the shop today, I've got the Chevy Cruise project done, and I'm working on editing video for you guys, uh, doing my voiceover and all that. And I want to give you guys a final walk around of it, which I'll have to make that today. It's all polished and reassembled, but the problem I run into is I don't have any sunshine. It wasn't sunny yesterday or today, and I wanted to get an outside look on that car in the natural daylight so you can see how it turned out. Um, looking at it in the shop, you know, from 10 feet away, anything can look decent. But uh, you put it outside with uh, Mother Nature and her sunshine, and of course you can see the flaws. Then if it looks good outside, that's what you want. Fluorescent lights can really throw you when it comes to... Uh, color match and things like that, but uh, I did have it outside earlier this week, setting in the sun, getting the panel temp up on it so I could uh, nip the dirt out of it and all that and uh, get it buffed up. It turned out real nice, so I'll get a video of that made for you guys, but I just want to make this quick video and uh, do a short, I guess, uh, initial thoughts and uh, review on this thing. I'll keep you guys updated on uh, any problems I might run into with it, but for now, that's what I got. So I'm going to cut this video short and uh, put something together for you. Hope everybody's having a good day. We'll see you.